if I just had to say one word, it's determination because I want to win and I work around the clock. The biggest names in e-commerce share tricks of the trade from tools and software to strategies and growth hacks. Learn from the best and take your business to the next level. What are the actual tactical things that you're doing to attract people? Now your host, J.D. Krause. Hello and welcome back to e-commerce in the trenches. This is J.D. Krause and today I'm stoked to have John Dowdy with EquinityProducts.com. John, welcome to the show. Well, it's glad to be here. It's going to be fun. It is going to be fun. Well, hey, um, tell me about Equinity. Give me a little bit of the background, how you got started, and and uh, and kind of a spoiler alert um, for everybody listening. Uh, John is my first uh, equine-related e-commerce store owner that I've had on the show, and so it goes right back to my roots in rodeo and ranching and horses and all of that stuff and. And we even have something else in common, which which we'll talk about a little bit later. But uh, tell me about how you got started in this business, John. Well, and thank you. And I, I think by you giving that introduction, a piece of your Western came out when you said roots. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> my wife. Well, uh, let me wife's... tell you. Tell you all something <laughs> right here. Yeah. <laughs> well, my, my wife gets so frustrated with me because... Uh, I call root beer, root beer. And she said, no, 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 it's root beer. And I said, and, and it's also a crick, not a creek. And so, you know, we we constantly go back and forth. Yes, but, boy, yeah, you, you are away, Western out there. I think I gave away my hillbilly roots. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's funny when you're when I'm at shows and, you know, you're around all these uh, Western cowboys and you, I, I will fall into the draw well, yes, ma'am, I tell you what, you know, we get into all that kind of stuff, but you know, Hey, it's like a chameleon, I guess, in some ways, but yeah, absolutely. anyways, uh, I digress on that. So, uh, Equinity actually started back in 1998 as a human product. Uh, it's an amino acid stack. It was developed by a British Cambridge and Harvard educated family physician up in Canada. And it was, um, marketed to the 50 plus crowd as an anti-aging youth formula. And it's still marketed that way today in 2006, when I first learned about it, um, the company realized it had all the things that athletes are looking for, recovery, stamina, the better, faster, stronger. And so they took the same youth formula. They just put a secondary label on it. And I had connections being in Southwest Florida into Major League Baseball. So I took it to a buddy of mine. And uh, long story short on that, we had it certified for sport. So there's no banned substances. They won't test. And so currently it's in all of Major League Baseball under the GHP sport brand. And then in 2014, we took the exact same formula, put it in a tub for horses and called it Equinity, which is a combination of equine, infinity, and energy wrapped into one word. And interestingly enough, we take the same amount as a horse or a dog or an elephant. And the reason is, is because this product is targeting the pituitary gland, which is roughly the same size in all mammals, about the size of a pea. And so one of the first things that we tend to notice on the human side is a really deep sound sleep, the deep REM sleep that you just don't get as you age. And I think you and I might know something about that. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but in the horse world, it's taken off like gangbusters. Um, and merely, you know, it, it, animals don't know about placebo. So they either react or they don't. And uh, fortunately for us being, uh, we're very blessed. I mean, the, the transformations you know, typically within a couple of days to a couple of weeks, especially by 30 days, super shiny coat, uh, more muscle. I mean, if you could see me right now, my coat is very shiny. So, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so that's a little bit of the history on, on Equinity. Very cool. So I told you when we, when we chatted uh, the other day that I, I felt like you had a bit of a Canadian accent. And so that's right. Eh? Uh, yeah, hey, exactly. Um, you were actually, uh, did you work on the human side before you got involved and then, and then blew up equinity or, uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, originally the company was set up as a network marketing company, uh, and it was set up that way until 2010. And there was some stuff going on in the company and my business partner and I left in 2010. Uh, but before we left, we had them change their business model, got them out of network marketing, just went to a direct to market company. And it's not too often in life where you come back to a company that you left uh, and then purchase the company and 
keep rocking. And that's kind of what we did in 2012. We came back in the company and did some things and, um, you know, then we brought Equinity out in 2014 and, and, uh, here we are today. So it's, it's, like I said, we are blessed to have a, a product that works like it does. That's awesome. So talk to me, our podcast is all about attracting, converting and retaining great customers. So on the attracting side, uh, what would you say is one of or a couple of the things that you have done uh, over the last three years or so, a couple, three years, that has, has actually just blown up your business? Well, being in the horse industry, uh, and, and you can appreciate this being in, in the industry itself, but uh, I'm sure it, it cross-pollinates into any industry. Anybody that's been in the industry for any length of time, especially when we're talking supplements, their automatic reaction is, oh my gosh, here's another elixir or snake oil or whatever. And especially in the horse world, they've tried pretty much everybody tries everything there is because their horse is the most important thing to them. And in a lot of ways, it's, it is the most important thing because that's what makes them the money. So they have to keep, keep them healthy. Right. And yeah, a lot of times they, they don't eat, but the horse does. Yes, <laughs> that's it. Uh, the, uh, the owner will forego eating to make sure their horse does have food. That is absolutely a truth right there. <laughs> so, one of the things that we did, uh, because at the time, 2014, we were new to the market, uh, just trying to figure things out. And although I grew up in Oklahoma, y'all, um, <laughs> on a farm, uh, milked cows, that was a handful, let me tell you that. Um, but, you know, growing up in that world on, on a farm uh, and now getting into this industry, nobody knows who you are. And so the thought was, okay, well, how, how do we even do this? Because nobody knows who we are. We don't have any credibility. So how do we get credibility? What we did with our company is we started giving away product. Uh, just we would give it away. And then what we did is here, we're, we're going to give you this. Here's what, and, and again, at the time, it had never been in the horse world. So we didn't know what to even tell people to expect. But what we did know is perfectly safe for the horse. Here's what we experience on the human side uh, and because mammals are mammals and cells are cells, I mean, and th there's gotta be some correlation. So if you'll do us a favor, we're going to give you the product and you just give us feedback. And then what we started doing is getting testimonials. So now the testimonials, the third party testimonials, we started using that as leverage to then sell the product. And in 2015, we had uh, 30 day samples. And so we did a, um, campaign on Facebook and we gave away 200 of these 30 day samples. And what we found was the conversion rate into a customer was 20%, nice. which is just off the charts. Um, Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Now, now let me, let me stop you. Sure. Were you using any fancy uh, contest software uh, like contest domination or any of the other viral, viral uh, softwares, or were you just simply uh, capturing, you know, having them say something in the Facebook post, or how exactly were you tactically executing on that giveaway? This was simply finding people on the ground that, uh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, we, we did a, com yeah, on Facebook. On Facebook, what we did is uh, we had somebody that was, that kind of had some, um, connections in the horse world. They did a lot of social media mm -hmm. and we had them kind of blast out because they had their ambassadors online. And so we, uh, we kind of leveraged her up a little bit and okay. gave, gave her some free products. So it, it really comes down to who, you know, right. and Absolutely. with anything that you're doing, you know, you, you can try to do it by yourself and you can work hard or, um, you know, there's a book, uh, by, Rice and Trout, a marketing book that goes back years ago, maybe in around the 90s, and it's called Horse Sense. And what they talk about in this book is you can try to do things yourself and work hard and do everything. But otherwise, and it's funny, we're talking about equinity because it's called Horse Sense, but it's like, or you can just find a horse and jump on it and ride it. And, <laughs> you know, and so, um, and I actually had just started reading this book not long ago, but uh, the, the interesting part, what I took out of that was, you can work hard on your own or you find people that can help you get there. I mean, you look at any successful business and none of those businesses happened with one person. It took a team of people 
finding the right people to partner up with. And that's kind of what we did with uh, getting the word out there. And it's funny because this uh, gal actually, because she specialized in social media, she approached us initially and she says, you know, your Facebook page could use a little help. And <laughs> Don't you love it? I'm Don't like, you love it what are you happen? talking about? Yeah. I'm like, we have 72 people. And that's up from last week because we were at 69 last week. So we are moving here. And she's just like, um, no, you don't have a lot of credibility. I said, we do have credibility. We are up. you know. So we were going back and forth like this. And so she really helped get our um, Facebook page with the credibility. We started getting the testimonials. We started giving out the samples. And so it was a combination of all of that. And it uh, it took about a year before we really started getting some nice traction. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of how that went down. Nice. Very cool. So you moved from 30-day samples to um, you did something else. <clears throat> I yes. believe it was a 30-day challenge. Talk to me about that. Yeah, so we had our 30-day samples out there for quite a while. We knew we had a conversion rate of 20%, which I'm as, I'm guessing the, the average in the industry might be 1% or 2% if you're going to run a campaign to to find out if it's successful, if it's a one or 2%, then, hey, you've got something. Well, we knew we had a home run with 20% conversion. And so as the year went by, and this is now going into 2016 to, towards the end and coming in around uh, to the beginning of this year, everybody kept telling us that was, or we would do outbounds to our customers and say, you know, ask them about the product and these kinds of things. And the, consistently people were telling us, Oh, well, we noticed a difference within a couple of days to a couple of weeks. So we're like, really? So what we did is we went down to 15 day samples. And although I knew the feedback was strong at a couple of days to a couple of weeks, I didn't completely 100% believe or wasn't comfortable rather that I know that it works, but I just wasn't hundred percent convinced because if you have somebody, if I can talk to somebody and ex give them the education on it, then it's no problem. But somebody willy nilly that just takes a 15 day sample. Well, how can you really tell that this works in 15 days, especially if they're not in tune with their horse. Right. And so what I did on Facebook is I came up with the Equinity 30 day challenge. And so I did a buy one, get one free on the 15 day samples. So it still gave them the 30 days or getting something for free. And we're breaking even. We, we'd make no money on that. And sometimes we'd even lose a dollar or two. But I already knew what our conversion rates were. And at the same time, in uh, early 2016, around April, I guess it was, I started strategically finding people on the ground that had databases. They were horse trainers. They had lots of horses or they were boarders. You know, I had large barns and or a circle of influence, massage therapist, uh, dentist, uh, chiropractors. And yes, they do exist in the horse world. They absolutely do. <laughs> I, you know, I was thinking, uh, <clears throat> I was thinking about a couple of things. You said borders, and just to clarify for those of you who aren't around horses, um, we're not talking about hoarders where people store a lot of crap. You yeah, know, trailer trailer about, parks. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we're talking about boarding horses. There's, you know, people that have big barns, and that's all they do is professionally take care of horses. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, there's horse massage therapists. There's horse chiropractors. There are horse dentists. And actually, uh, horse dentists uh, really, really help horses. Because mm -hmm. uh, if they're not, if they have hooks and, and ramps and all this kind of stuff in their mouth, they can't effectively, their mouth can't move kind of side to side in that circular grinding motion to consume their feed and get the best nutritional value out of it. So, uh, yeah, it's crazy, right? All yeah. these little subcultures inside of different verticals. It really is. I'm, I'm waiting for a horse that has braces, but I haven't seen one of those yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but anyways, what I would do is I would find strategically find people that way. And a lot of that would come through word of mouth as well. Um, and what we found there when and I would sell wholesale to them. And then I would also give them samples based on however many big tubs they ordered. Our, our large tub is a $99, $99.99 for a hundred servings. So it's a dollar a day, which is super cheap in the horse world. Yeah, absolutely. And so however many big tubs they bought, I would match it or do half that amount with the samples. Well, what we found with the circles of influence on the ground is their conversion rates were 90 to a hundred percent which is just off the charts, but they've got the credibility. And again, we've got a product that works 
And um, so, you know, business year to date is up over 600% compared to this time last year. And, you know, it's, it's cranking. Um, wow. Yeah. Wow. Congratulations. Yes. Well, and I tell you what, it, uh, you know, with, with the guys over there at uh, Revenue Conduit and Unific, you know, they were really able to implement a lot of um, things behind the scenes through Infusionsoft and things that were, they, this is how I'm able to find all these stats out. Uh, because without that, I mean, you, you really have nothing. How do you do any kind of measuring of any kind? So they were really able to do a, a lot of neat things. And uh, so we're able to go back and retarget specific people and do all kinds of things. And, you know, lifetime customer value, of, you know, over, you know, two, three hundred dollars per customer. And so it's it's quite amazing to, to see all those kind of stats. So I want to circle back and just and just tie a nice ribbon around it. I'll, one of the best things that's worked for you is these giveaways. And actually, the cool thing about it, a product like yours that actually works if you can just get the product in the hands of the consumer, i.e., the horse owner who will then feed it to the horse, uh, the product will the proof is in the pudding, mm-hmm. and and you have built-in stickiness as we call it in in you know in marketing world, and uh, so you're using giveaways on Facebook. You're you're actually reaching out to influencers that have a, a circle of influence, getting product in their hands, selling to them wholesale. Um, and the more people that get their horses on it, the more testimonials that are flowing in and it's a wonderful way to attract and it leads directly into converting great customers who end up being evangelists for equinity yes. and which increases lifetime value and gets people coming back and reordering. And so it's one of the things I love about a consumable products business uh, that that has strong transformation that can actually happen. I mean, I've been around nutritional supplements and the, that world and and it's it's really it's really dramatic. If you can get a, a measurable or tangible, uh, something you can feel or see result yes. in under 30 days. And so the fact that your product's doing that, you know, is, I mean, what a blessing, what an amazing thing. It really is. And one of the other things that I did is it, you know, you lift the hood on this thing and it, there's a million wires going everywhere. But as you know, being in business for a long time, you don't start off that way. I mean, you, you're, a lot of times you're just trying to figure out, will it work? Does it sell? You know, you're trying to figure out all the pieces, just step one. Well, back in May of this year, um, we had had somebody kind of doing some Facebook advertising for us. And I'd piddled around with Facebook advertising a little bit here and there. But um, I, I really enjoy talking to people and going into shows and, you know, sharing the product and everything. But, you know, it's also cost, it costs a lot of money to do that. And, Absolutely. you know, you're driving around to feed stores. And the challenge with feed stores is like you walk into a store and you're like, oh, okay, here comes another sales guy, you know. And I understand that because I'm a sales guy, you know. So I I try to take a completely different approach, and you, most of the time I would just leave them with samples. I'm go, I'm gonna leave you this, and I, you know what? I'm gonna give you, I'll front you, a tub, and if you sell it, then you can pay me for it. If you don't sell it, then you don't owe me anything, you know. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna give you a couple sample tubs. So I want you to strategically give these sample tubs to some people here in in your area and somebody's going to come back and buy this tub. So I've been able to pick up a lot of uh, stores that way uh, because nobody to my knowledge does anything like that. But again, we know our product works. And so then what I did, I I realized, Oh my gosh, I'm spending massive amounts of time on the road. A lot of these feed stores, they're virtually impossible. Oh, I forgot. I know the product's still sitting here. I haven't done anything with it. You know, you get into the user error aspect of it. So in May, I decided to uh, take over, you know, just say, hey, what can I do with this Facebook advertising? And so I had a $500 budget and I blew through that in two days, but the sales were cranking and I spent 500 bucks and made like 1500. I'm like, holy cow, what is going on here? So I kept increasing the budget every day, every day, every day. And of course I ran out of inventory and, but I had the highest sales month I had ever had. And so as I'm waiting for my inventory to come in, um, I do it again in July 
and I I'm ended up spending like uh, the first month I spent like twenty four thousand, and then the when I did it again in July I spent thirty four thousand, and the sales were fifty eight to sixty thousand. And so I'm thinking, hey, this is a lot easier than spending time on the road, and I'm I'm actually getting sales sitting right at my computer, right. and um, <laughs> not a bad deal there. But well, uh, it's uh, yeah. like. It it's the stuff infomercials are made out of, right? Yes. John Dowdy sitting in his uh in his his uh, one one bedroom apartment in his underwear, you know, <laughs> selling fifty eight thousand dollars. Not that you have a one bedroom apartment, but no, no. it reminds me of those old infomercials, late night infomercials. Yes. yes. It's what hooks a lot of people into doing e commerce, but it's a lot of friggin' work, right? Yeah, I mean, you didn't is. just fall off the turnip truck, fall into this product. You've had a relationship with this product since 90, 98, 90, I mean, a long yeah, 2006. Time. Yeah. 2006 when I came in, but yeah, it's absolutely right. And you know, you look at it now, if you, know, you just tell the story now, it's like, Oh, well it's, it took uh, 11 years to be an overnight success is really yeah. what happened. Yeah. Cause you yeah. know, there for two or three years, I wasn't even involved in the company and then I came back in, but it is one of those things. It's, it's, um, Oh, well, I'll, I'll wrap this up with the Facebook stuff. So by a lot of times you don't know why you're doing things at the time that you're doing it, but then you can always look back and connect all the dots. And what ha- what came out of the Facebook was not only huge success, huge sales and everything else, but Facebook actually reached out to me uh, last month and wanted to give me some free marketing um, advice and things and tweaking my ads. And I'm like, well, yeah, you know what? They should be reaching out to me. I just spent thirty four thousand dollars, <laughs> <laughs> right, right. right? So um, it was such an interesting conversation over the last month with them because uh, they really went in, and there there was no catch or anything. They truly helped me tweak the ads. Um, and I'll give you a, a prime example. I was just using static ads, just an image uh, before and after photo. And what they did is they had me go into a a carousel type ad because they, what Facebook wants, they want interaction with the user, the end user. They don't want it to look like an ad. The more time that the end user spends on your ad, the lower your cost per click goes as one example. Well, what happened? So I implemented this right away and I launched, I launched a, a campaign on September 3rd and it's created over uh, 365 sales this month, uh, just in one, one ad and my cost per click, which was 20, 30 cents, 35 cents a click. Uh, and again, I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just putting stuff up there. Uh, my cost per click now is four to six cents per click. Wow. And my cost per acquisition, uh, which was climbing, it was 30, 40, 50. I even had some that were up to 60 bucks. And my thought there was, okay, well, I'm not really making any money or very little money, but I'll get them as a return, a repeat repeat customer. So it's kind of like a negative continuity thing. Just have to wait longer for the profit. But uh, by doing the tweaks that they had me do was, okay, now my cost per acquisition is down to 20, 25 bucks, you know, depending, but significantly. And so just this month, I'm going to spend $10,000 less, but my profit is still the same or better than, than what it was just off one ad. So, it's like giving yourself a ten thousand dollar raise. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So going back to what you said, you just don't wake up one day or fall off the turnip truck. It's all of this stuff accumulates, and it's you know surrounding yourself with the right people that you can learn from. And you know you, when you surround yourself with the right people, people love to share information because they a lot of times I like to show how smart they are. <laughs> right. So, but you know it's kind of a bragging thing, or it's just you know. But people genuinely like to share information, typically, you know. And um, so that's what I just try to do is. Uh, surround myself with the right people. And, you know, as long as every situation you get into is a win-win, then you should have no problems. It's just, you know, people start taking advantage and probably need to reassess that relationship. That's right. Yeah. John, what would you say in all your years of business, all the different things that you've done, uh, what is, what is one of the biggest mistakes that you've made in business? I would say, now this is my own personal battle that I have all the time. Um, I actually believe people. (laughs) (laughs) Oh yeah. That's my, that's me right there. Doggone it. (laughs) 
that really hit me. That's good. <laughs> yeah. So well, that's that's big in the butt, huh? Oh, and my and of course my wife, who is my uh, my my compass in all all kinds of ways. We've we've been married now for almost fifteen years, and she's like, uh, John. There's some flying going up here. I'm like, no, honey. And of course, I'll justify. Well, this has got to happen because this is because they told me this. I mean, see, I can't comprehend it. Why would somebody not be honest? Why? I mean, why would they lie? You know, I, I just I cannot wrap my head around that because I wasn't brought up that way, you know. And so that is my my biggest uh, Achilles heel right there or kryptonite uh, is I actually believe you. And so if you, if you need a sucker for a partner, I'm right here because I will. <laughs> So oh, that has That's cost fun. me more money um, through the years, um, uh, you know, resources, time. But you know what? I look at it like this. Um, as I go through my day, and I, I mentioned earlier, it's got to be a win-win. And I know I can sleep at night. I can look at myself in the mirror and, and know that I did everything I possibly could to make the situation the best of what it could be. And I don't. I have no regrets or regrets. What was that movie where he had a tattooed across his chest? Yeah. Regrets. Yeah. I don't remember the movie. Anyways. <laughs> so I don't have any regrets for any of the decisions that I've made um, because everything's a learning experience too. And, you know, the older you get, I'm in my early 40s now, but, you know, you look at the situations and it's like, okay, well, people have taken advantage of me. I've learned from that. As long as you don't make the same mistakes multiple, multiple times, obviously, or hopefully you don't make them multiple times. But um, yeah, so I would cool. I, I would say that would be uh, my Achilles heel right there. Cool. Uh, you talked about lifetime value and things. Do you look at eighty twenty? Do you look at the Pareto principle as it applies to your business, focusing on you know uh, a smaller percentage of high leverage activities? Do you have any thoughts around that? Uh, interesting. If we have this uh, podcast tomorrow then I would have thoughts on that. Um, But I actually have a call today where we're supposed to be going over that because I have not looked into any of that um, as of yet. Uh, But so. Okay, cool. Well, it'll be fascinating. I'll circle back with you and um, we're, uh, I'll put a teaser out there. The 80, 20 is a big, a big thing to me. And I'm, I'm always uh, trying to, you know, look at the, the handful of things that have high leverage opportunities. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. it'll be fun to hear. You're going to the NFR, the National Finals Rodeo, in December this year. Is that right? That's right. We've got uh, a, a, a few riders that are going out there. They've been on product. And uh, so I'm, I've got an opportunity to go out to uh, Vegas in December. Um, there's also another thing in Oklahoma City at the 1st of uh, December. And then go right up to Vegas after that. But yeah, I've never, I've been to the NFR, but it's been on the, uh, the human supplement or I've been to Vegas, uh, at the same time as the NFR, uh, the, uh, major league baseball winter meetings for all the major league baseball coaches. So the human GHP sports supplement, uh, that's typically at the beginning of December and they move around. So in 2008, it was in Vegas at the same time the NFR was going on. So we didn't have a horse product then, but, um, the human product that was out there. So that was the closest I've been to the NFR. Yeah. <laughs> but this year well, we're we're gonna go. So that's that's great. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I've heard you've been to the NFR though. I, I have. I was just getting ready to say I competed there actually in two events in in two thousand. Uh, I competed in the steer wrestling and the and the tie down roping, and then uh, in two thousand five I was uh, the head of PRCA Properties, which uh, ran the marketing division of the basically the governing body of pro rodeo Mm -hmm. and uh so was involved with television contracts and national sponsorship agreements and that's awesome yeah and so it was kind of fun for me to to go back in the capacity being in the front office there and uh you'll have a blast it's uh it's a really unique event um you know, cowboy hats and boots converge upon Las Vegas, and <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Cowboy Christmas, which is their, you know, I think they have, uh, they occupy the Las Vegas uh, Convention Center and the Sands. Uh, it, maybe it's even moved around since I've been out there, um, but there's a lot of a lot of shopping that goes on, mm-hmm. and a lot of uh, a lot of horse people, obviously, and. And you'll do well. You'll 
you'll have a good time. Uh, Vegas wears me out though. Like, oh man, does I mean, it ever? Days and I, uh, you know, I I'm glad that I don't live in that environment oh, all yeah. of the time. <laughs> now, uh, you did mention to me the other day of in your professional rodeo experience that you had not broken any bones. You had some other injuries, but I did. Yeah. And I'm excited to uh, try your product. Very excited. Um, I've, I've torn my ACL and my right knee a couple times, uh, both, both times competing in rodeo. And then I tore my left shoulder. And just recently I, I play old man basketball and I roll my ankle really bad. And I'm just now getting, getting around without, you know, limping, uh, limping, horribly and so uh, i'm super stoked to try your product and yeah you know, I'll be dunking again i've only dunked once in my life but uh i don't i think it was a short rim or something or i, I, had, <laughs> I don't know where my ups came from that or, day but did, was there a trampoline was, was there a trampoline involved there wasn't and i was i've been trying to recreate that moment you know ever since so oh man yeah, yeah. i know that it, it's bad when you hit your 40s because it's like when you're out playing basketball my son is big time into basketball and so we'll go to the park and i play with all the the young guys usually i'm uh-huh. i'm one of the uh the older ones out there but it what the part that just is really irritating is when the ball is going by and your brain is like yeah i'm gonna get that and your body's like yeah i don't think so that's <laughs> yeah <laughs> that happens to me more often than, or the other one is I, i'll get him you know if you're guarding somebody and you're like how did i let him blow by me like i never yes. used to let that happen. no not at all yeah yourself yeah well. so you have an interesting tech stack um i spent some time on your site uh you you have a WordPress site, yes, and and then uh, when you click on to buy a product, uh, it actually goes to Shopify, and you're using Shop- Shopify's shopping cart solution. Yes, um, you have Facebook Messenger uh, that pops up on the site. I'd like for you to talk to me just a little bit about uh, your thoughts around how you have your site organized and how the Facebook Messenger um, widget, you know, helps you to educate or answer questions and, and convert buyers. Love to hear that. All right. Well, um, it was one of those where it wasn't planned this way. It just how it happened. Um, so through the years, I was always interested, even going back to college, uh, was probably one of the uh, first people to, to build my own website, the old HTML way. And I was so proud. <laughs> uh-huh. um, so anyway, through the years, technology has always intrigued me. Um, just period. So I've kind of learned Photoshop and, you know, I can manipulate photos and images and pictures. And then I got into Dreamweaver. And so I learned Dreamweaver and to build websites. And then of course I got into WordPress and of course that was, uh, made everything super easy through WordPress. And so the, the site, um, community products I actually built and then we needed, um, uh, a way to check out. And so then I heard about uh, Shopify. So through Shopify, um, that's how we just connected everything that way. And then I, of course, I ran on, ran on to uh, Revenue Conduit, uh, the guys over there. And that's how I connected everything because I was already using Infusionsoft as well. Uh-huh. So that's CRM. how those, yeah, so that's how those components go. Um, is there a better way to do it? I don't know. I mean, it's it's one of those where this is working pretty good. I know WordPress inside and out, and so things I can change and update, and I can do it on the fly. Because I know, you know, Shopify has the full, you can build the entire website right on Shopify, but I'm like, uh, yeah, I don't have time to do that learning curve. So right. I just kept it the way that it is right now. Right. Absolutely. Yep. And, and Messenger, do you get some good interaction on that? Do you find that's valuable? Yes. Now, are you talking about the little blue thing down on the bottom right-hand corner? Correct. Uh-huh. Yeah. So that's actually a, it's not Messenger, believe it or not. It looks like Messenger, but it's actually a uh, chat um, software. Okay. And so- Is it live chat? It is it is live chat. I just have it turned off because I don't have time to, to do it. <laughs> so um, I, I installed it on there, but what people can do is they can leave a message if they have a specific question. And so- I probably get three, four, five messages a day. I would say probably on average, you know, at least at least two to two to four messages per day through there. Just questions about the product, 
And one of the things, and I learned this years ago, and it's probably because I didn't know any better. I just thought this is what everybody did. And then uh -huh. later I found out, well, nobody does this. But <clears throat> being in sales, a lot of people are scared of sales, but sales is really just talking to people. I mean, you're, I don't sell people anything. It's, it's an education of what you have. And then if people like you, they buy from people they like. And then you have a bonus if the product actually works the way that you say that it does. And then it's an extra bonus. But <laughs> <laughs> so um, I used to be in the financial services industry in, in um, life insurance. And I've heard that's a hard business to be in. But of course, I didn't know any better. And, and I'm, I'm going to go a little bit off tangent and then I'll bring it back in. So uh, here in Southwest Florida, this was 2004. I, I didn't know anybody you know, I moved down here and I didn't know a soul. <clears throat> My wife is all I knew. And so I'm in the insurance business. And what they have you do in the insurance business is write a list of all the people you know. And then those are the people you're going to go talk to first. I was like, well, I don't know anybody. I mean, I, I just moved here. So the general manager says to me, uh, if you want to be number one in the company, I'll tell you what you have to do, but nobody ever wants to do it. I said, well, I'll do it. I mean, I'm hungry. I'd, I'll go do anything. All right, but nobody wants to do it. I said, well, tell me. He goes, well, if you go walk into a thousand businesses and just introduce yourself, tell them what you're doing, if there's any way you can help with insurance needs or anything like that, you'll be the number one sales guy in all the company. Now, this was Northwestern Mutual, uh, which is a very large insurance company. Right. So I said, that's it? That's all I have to do? And he goes, yeah. And uh, I said, all right. So I would get up at um, you know, six, six thirty in the morning, go hit some of these construction guys that would, the owner would be there before their crews got in, you know, uh, which it would give you a leg up anyways. Cause who even does that? Right. But, um, I only made it to 750 stores. Um, and I finished fourth in the company for first year agents. So it just goes to show you that, you know, if you do things that other people don't want to do or don't think to do, or, you know, you, you have an advantage, but, um, where this is all leading is I love talking to people and you get into the, the message, people send emails and it's customer service. And what I found out in sales a long time ago, if you just return a phone call, you are so far ahead of the game because a lot of sales guys, they don't follow up with people, you know, um, they just sit and wait for their phone to ring versus the other way around. If, if you're on a call with somebody and you always get a next action step. Well, if you call them back when you said you're going to call them back, then a lot of people are surprised. And there's a lot of people on the receiving end of that, that sometimes just test you um, to see, because they want to know how um, hungry you are for. And there was an instance in the insurance business. I walked in 7.30 in the morning, and it was a glass repair. And the owner's in there by himself. And so I tell him, I introduced myself. He goes, what are you doing out at this hour? I said, well, I figured, <laughs> <laughs> I go, I figured it was the only way I'd get a chance to meet you, which was, you know, I thought, I thought was clever. <laughs> right, so, right. so he kind of laughed and uh, he goes, what are you doing? Well, you know, what are you doing? So I told him insurance. He goes, really? He goes, well, I had a guy come in last week that was going to help me with my insurance. And I've got the whole folder right here. I put it all together for him. I never heard back from him. I go, really? So of course I'm drooling right now. Right. So here's what he does to me. He goes, listen, I'm really busy today, but if you'll come back next Thursday at 730, I'll be happy to sit down with you. I said, all right. So I show up next Thursday, 730. He goes, ah, I didn't think you'd show up. He goes, I just did that to see if you'd show up or not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So if you just follow up with people and, you know, going, so going back to the messenger um, on the website, you know, emails are coming in. I'm pretty much, well, I am, I'm running this entire operation by myself. I can't do that without the systems in place. And so over time I've created a, an FAQ um, spreadsheet or, you know, notepad paper, which I actually probably need to put on the website. I just haven't got there yet, but you know, a lot of the same questions come in. So I, I'm doing a lot of just copying and pasting. So it's very fast. Um, but so many people comment of how great the customer service is. And you know, if there's an order that's messed up, then you send it out again and you throw in an extra sample tub. You know, you, you just do something and these people, you basically it's creating an army because these people, they love the product. They love the customer service. I mean, why would they go anywhere else? So that's right. Well, my, my final big question for you is, and I think you may have already answered it. Um, 
the one thing, what do you think the one thing is that you have done that has led to your success? If you could boil it all down to one thing. I would say if, if I just had to say one word, it's determination because I want, I want to win and I work around the clock. So I don't start at nine and take off at five. Um, and it took years and years for my wife to adjust to this type of lifestyle, but my phone's on me all the time. Um, we have the privilege in this industry, in this business to travel. So we have a camper. So everything's a business trip. And, you know, a lot of times by the time we're through traveling wherever we are, by the time we get to a campground, I might be on my computer for two or three hours because I have to keep all the Facebook stuff updated. I'm replying to emails and all that. So, you know, for two or three hours and it could be, you know, I'm up till nine, 10, 11, 12, one o'clock. And then, you know, if I don't get to somebody, they're the first ones I get to in the next morning. So my attitude towards everything is I'm going to win and it's a win-win for everybody. We've got, we're blessed to have such a great product, but these people that are asking questions that are purchasing product, they're putting their time into me by asking the questions or purchasing product from me. So it's my responsibility to give them the same attention back as best I can. And sure, do things fall through the crack? Absolutely. We just had a, with, with Hurricane um, Irma that came through, and we just missed that by 30 miles. It went just east of us, uh, but a lot of devastation. And then it goes right up Florida and right into Georgia, where our, our warehouse is in Georgia. Well, <clears throat> the timing of this couldn't have been more perfect. Uh, wink, wink. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, because we we had just moved over um um you know did a big change with our inventory and how it was all billed and everything else so there was a delay in shipping from all of that aspect at the same time when the hurricane was coming through the warehouse was out of electric for a couple of days so when they started shipping product um actually on this this monday i got notification people are saying hey i ordered product and all i got was a manila folder with the brochure and I'm like, what in the world? I mean, how can that even happen? How can somebody just pack a brochure and not the product? Oh. Right. And so, you know, stuff like, the, you know, your, your, every, your day's going fine. All of a sudden you get, there's 23 people that we know of that just got a brochure and oh. you know, people are sending an email. I am not happy. I'm so how do you handle that situation? The way that I handled it immediately, it's all about communication. If you communicate with people, and you screwed up or something screwed up in the company, I'm always apologizing. I'll be the first one to apologize. I am so sorry, but here, here's what I'm gonna do to make it up for you, or I'm gonna get to the bottom of this and I'll follow up. And then you just do what you say you're gonna do. And in this particular situation, uh, just yesterday, I wrote out an email in um, because of our CRM through Infusionsoft, I just did it from this date to this date to cover a range. And some of those people weren't even affected, but I didn't care. You know, um, it's like, hey, thank you so much for being a valued customer. It seems that some of you have um, only received a brochure instead of your product. And uh, I would imagine that since your horse can't read, that the brochure is no good to your horse. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I always try to turn things into a kind of a funny thing, but it's also I'm apologizing, thanking them for being a good customer. Uh, we fi fixed the problem and we're shipping everything out two day air you know, to get it to you as fast as possible. Thanks again so much. If you have any questions, contact me directly. <clears throat> and so it's determination, it's the customer service, and it's all those things. And, you know, people are pretty forgiving too if you're just up front with them. Right. Well, and if you take ownership and yes. you make it right, you know, Absolutely. and that, that that's, that's just old school how you do business. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's uh, the breath of fresh air that my goal in, in doing e-commerce in the trenches anyhow is to is to just say, look, forget the smoke and mirrors. This is this is real people doing doing business with other real people. It's humans doing business with humans. We just happen to do it uh, in the cloud. We just happen to do it online. And the whole world is shifting and becoming more and more open to transacting business this way. Uh, but it still falls back on good uh, principles of doing what you say you're going to do, you know, looking somebody in the eye, even though it might be virtually shaking their hand and thanking yes. them for, for coming in and looking around. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, John, uh, 
where can people go to learn more about Equinity products and uh, anything else that you have going on? Well, for all you horse folks out there that are listening in, there, there has to be somebody out there. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so Equinity products, it's E-Q-U-I-N-E-T-Y. So Equine with a T-Y. Uh, products with an S, even though there's only one SKU. But there is a sample one, so I guess that could be products. So equinityproducts.com. And uh, I really appreciate uh, you having me on and having uh, the time to share all of this information. And hopefully, um, you know, there's been some takeaways that people can have. And, uh, of course, I'm always open to, to learning myself. I, I definitely don't know everything, but love sharing things that have gone on with me. And if it helps somebody else, that is that is awesome. So I appreciate all of your time as well. You bet, John. Thanks, and, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Okay, thanks a bunch. Thanks for listening to E-Commerce in the Trenches, brought to you by Unific. Visit unific.com to start turning your receipts into revenue through highly segmented order confirmation campaigns and more. And more.